Hey, welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and today we're going to be taking this beautiful piece of CISO wood and starting first of what will probably be three projects with it. What I would like to do with the top half is turn this into a serving tray, charcuterie board, you know, whatever special name you want to call it, for a special someone who will see this video after she receives it for her birthday. This wood comes from India predominantly, and it's called Indian rosewood sometimes. It's a very fast-growing, semi-hardwood. I picked up at my local hardwood dealer, or wood store as I like to call it, the Woodworker's Source. Now, you might ask, why would I need to buy wood at a uh, specialty dealer? One of the reasons is typically it's a better product, and it's actually dried, like they say it is. You don't need a moisture meter, but if you start getting into hardwoods and specialty woods, that uh, can be unstable, then you do want something like this. This one was super cheap. I can link it on Amazon. Uh, I use it with uh, my other business in real estate, checking for moisture problems in all sorts of other areas. But what you can do, I have this uh, piece of plywood that I pre-soaked yesterday. You see there, it's reading 25% on the points. And let's check our wood, zero. So when they say kiln dried, they mean kiln dried. What happens as moisture dries out of wood is it will begin to twist and disshape or uh, misshape itself. L let me show you a good example. Okay, so we need an example of what, what it looks like when things go wrong with wood or when you don't check your wood properly. This was my very first slab cookie project. This was a gift from a friend, at least the wood was, and I, I didn't do so great with it. It looked pretty awesome for the first couple of months, and then as the seasons changed, it started to grow and expand, and all these cracks started popping out. You can see at the angle here that it turned into kind of a bowl it is applied to a piece of plywood. I've got it mounted to a set of metal legs that I made. And even still, with all the work that I put into it, epoxy, it turned into kind of a disaster. So make sure to uh, double check that your wood is dry and it's usable, and then you won't have these same problems like I did. Learn from other people's mistakes, like I probably should have in the first place. Let's get back into our project. So with all that said, I don't claim to be a wood specialist or even really know what I'm doing with these more expensive fancy woods. This board was on sale. It was $124 for just this length here. So if I can get three projects out of it, I'll be pretty happy. You can buy smaller pieces or cutoffs. There were some really beautiful cherry cutoffs for like 30 bucks at the store, but I liked the grain here. Some of the other wood projects I've made have had really strong grain and it just appeals to me. So what I'm thinking is I want about an 18 inch board right there. I've got some just basic cabinet handles that we're gonna plop onto either corner and sand, seal, and deliver. Now, there are clearly a number of ways that you could cut a straight line. I prefer to use my chop saw, so I have to get it off my storage rack. You could use a sawzaw, skill saw, circular saw, whatever you want to get straight. A handsaw, I don't wanna use a handsaw. While we're on the topic of trying to cut a straight line, is that really necessary? Probably not. We're working with a live edge board here. So if it's a little off, if it's a little jagged, smooth it up, make it look however you want, honestly. Okay, watch your ears, it's about to get loud. Now for the sake of simplicity, I can't recommend enough to use a source like the Woodworker Source. Not sponsored, though, if they want to, reach out. For a lot of different reasons. One, the dry wood, that's super helpful. 
This wood is already surfaced, which means that it's flat, it's somewhat sanded, and it has a prepped edge. And the bark has even been peeled on this side. So there's not a lot of work that you're gonna have to do, but what I'm gonna be doing is sanding it a little bit further, easing these edges to get it where I want it, and then we'll seal it. So we're gonna need a sander, some 120 sandpaper, 220 sandpaper, 320 sandpaper. This one, we might not need. We'll see how it feels. Usually you only need to go to about 220. I should have, you know, some 150, 180 in between there, but I'm gonna make pretty large steps because this is pretty smooth as it is. Let's start sanding. Well, you listen to this nice calm music. sure what happened but I just filmed routing this edge with a chamfer bit and it didn't save so here we are after the fact what we have is I did a 30 degree chamfer I tested it on a piece of redwood with my palm router because it adds just enough of detail versus that square edge all right now that all the sawdust is cleaned up we can make more sawdust so now what I want to do is ease these hard edges with some 320. I'm just using a foam sanding block to support it. Sometimes you want a really sharp edge on there. I made a table a few years back that I beveled two different edges, a 45 and a 30 with a much larger profile that was super sharp, came out really nice. I'll throw a picture of that up here somewhere or over here, I, I can't see what the camera can see right now. That was my second wood project I'd ever made. Which just goes to show you that at any point you wanna learn a new skill or a new hobby, just try it. That's really all you gotta do. You don't have to invest in a ton of tools. I've been adding tools slowly over the years. My first passion is cars. The splinter test, pretty good clean it up and now we'll actually line up to drill some holes in it. So we're going to put two pieces of tape, one on either edge. We've got inch and a half tape, so we'll come in three quarters of an inch. Quarters. What I have here is a Craig jig, but this is a cabinet jig. So what I can do is I'll adjust my hole centers here out to this size. I won't be able to use the edge guide necessarily. I'll have to line it up here with my lines at either end. I don't know if you can see those, but I can put them on my line that I added to my tape and then I can center them on my mark here and then I'll be ready to go. Okay, so using the jig, one of the nice things is it gives you this bushing so that as you're drilling, you tend to drill a straighter hole. So if I line my edge up there, and down here at the bottom, a good spot to drill and line up my holes on both sides. I realized as I started drilling that if I drill through here, I'm gonna drill right into my table saw underneath. So I need to support this up. You can really feel once you get through that hardwood down into that soft cedar. Right there. And hopefully by drilling down through here with a backstop, that's going to have prevented chip out on the backside. Let's find out. Yeah, not so bad. On this side, we're going to recess our screws. So this little chip out is going to disappear. I want the screw head to be down below the surface of the wood. So when you set this down on a counter, it won't have screws touching, it'll just be the wood touching. In order to drill straight with my shaky hands, I'm gonna try this handheld drill press. I could put it on my big drill press, but I think that this is a simple and potentially reasonable tool for most people to buy versus a full size drill press. That worked 
fucked up, dude. Okay, before I drop the camera like 70 more times, let me drill those other three holes. Shall we test the handle? Uh-oh. Don't want that tape stuck on there. Ready. Nice and solid. Not sure why you'd need it so solid. Carrying heavy stuff? Fighting off zombies? I don't know. Comment down below if you'd be fighting off zombies with a uh, charcuterie board. All right, so after all the hard work, we're finally getting to the fun stuff, and that's where we're gonna really get to see what this is gonna look like when it's done. Before we can apply a finish to it, we need to make sure it's clean, free of oils and other contaminants, and to do that, we're gonna use odorless mineral spirits. You can get this at any home goods store, woodworking store, whatnot. This is going to be an important step in preparing the wood, opening the pores, and making sure that it's free of dirt and debris, especially after all that sanding that we've done. And what it does is it really shows you exactly what it's going to look like once you get a finish on it. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what I was looking for right there. That is going to be pretty. Now for a finish, I am going to be using food grade mineral oil because the person that's getting this, which I don't think I said earlier, this is a gift for my mom's birthday, I am certain she'll be putting food on it. So I want to make sure that it's going to be safe for her and whoever she is serving, me and my grand and her grandkids, my kids, or her friends or whomever it may be that it's going to be free of contaminants and clean and safe for everybody. Wow, look at that end grain. That is gorgeous. This is one of those parts of working with wood that you get to this stage and it really starts to come to life. Now, I don't want to set this clean side down on my dirty work surface, so let me get some triangle stands to support it. These are little painter's triangles. I'll use that to keep it up off of the table. As you're cleaning, you can see my rag is getting dirty. You wanna rotate and make sure that you get a nice clean surface. It'll really aid in the longevity of the piece. Now I had already wiped this down and blown as much of the dust off with compressed air as possible. Uh, this doesn't really smell, but it's definitely not odorless. So make sure you have good ventilation. You may want to wear gloves. I always say that. I never have gloves on. Almost never. All right, because these triangles do have a little tip to them, I'm putting them in my screw holes because I don't want to put any little indents in the wood. I don't imagine with how hard this wood is that that would happen, but better safe than sorry. You see more dirt coming out. We'll rotate our towel. You're supposed to use a lint-free towel. This is as close as I have. So that's what I'm using. I use these for detailing cars and they work really well. Inexpensive. After I get something like this super dirty, they go into my rag pile and I'll reuse them forever on cleanup projects. Goodness gracious, that is beautiful. You can see just how beautiful that wood is. Before I can apply a finish, I do need to make sure that this dries out. Should take less than 20 minutes. It is a little chilly here today, but I'll give that time to rest and then we'll apply our mineral oil and our handles. We'll be just about done. This is a quick project. Just like when we were wiping down with the mineral spirits, we're going to wipe down with our mineral oil, or 
our food grade mineral oil. And then we're gonna let it sit. Okay, now we let it dry. Now that the oil has fully soaked into the board, it's nice and smooth. It's time to put our handles on. I went ahead and added a little bit of black paint to the backside of the screws or to the head of the screws so that they are going to blend in or disappear a little more than they would if they were just the metal. Well, now that the handles are on, last step for a wood project for me is to throw my stamp on there. This is uh, something that my wife got me some time ago for fun and I've continued to use it. Plus being a gift for my mom and it's our family name, she'll really enjoy that. Hey, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support, comments, likes, subscribes as we work on building this channel. If you're interested in other videos, you can take a look at other projects that I've done up here. Again, thanks so much for the support. Um, we'll see where this goes. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.